Good evening, and this is always one of my favorite Friday nights of the year. We had the big Terre Haute North and Terre Haute South boys and girls rivalry on the hardwood. Always fun. Yes. Huge crowd at that yes. one tonight. We also had key WIC games between Northview and Sullivan, Edgewood and West Vigo. Those were great. Plus a pair of Class 1A showdowns. Top-ranked Bar Reeve was at 9th-ranked Shackamack. Second-ranked Lagodi also up north. They were on the road at 11th-ranked WRV. Little boys and girls down in the Little Illini Conference tournaments were on the line. But we'll start the show with the biggie. That's the Terre Haute North-South Showdown. That's right, Ross. For the first time ever in this rivalry, the North Patriots enter with both the shoe and the crown trophies. We'll start with the boys game. The Patriots have won the shoe trophy two years in a row. And look at the crowd on hand for this ball game. Unbelievable. Lucas Stewart's three puts the Braves up four in the first quarter. Nice start by Sal. When he steps out and shoots it, they're a good basketball team. North answers back with a corner three from Steven Davis. This game was tied at nine after one quarter. Now, kid, I know you like Ross. North Calvin Blank had a big second quarter. The Patriots junior good on the jumper. He had seven in the quarter. Blank is so tough on in, in the inside. He's ferocious. Kavars Gregory from downtown. Braves take a 19-18 lead. Late first half, Austin Lewis banks in two for North Patriots. Led 23-19 at the half. Third quarter, watch this pass. Jeffrey Turner to Stewart. Nice pass. Anytime you're not looking, it's tough for the defense to read it, right? <laughs> Norse Matt O'Leary had a great game. O'Leary misses his first attempt, but not his second. He had a game-high 21 points. Wild play here. Braves Turner picks up the loose ball. Scores right as the horn sounds at the end of the third quarter. It's good. South down three going to the final quarter. But fourth quarter, who do you expect to step up? The North seniors. Ross Sponsler, two of his 14. Then North other senior Matt O'Leary puts an exclamation point on it with a slam and jam. I've been waiting all year to get a slam of his. There we go. Terre Haute North wins a shoot for a third year in a row. That's the longest streak in this series since North won it six straight times from 98 to 2003. The Patriots win 57-49. North knows it wasn't their best victory of the season, but a much needed win. It's our first MIP win. We were 0-2, so this is important for us. You know, no matter if it's south or whatever, I mean, it's important for us and it'll get us rolling. We didn't play as well as we would have liked on the offensive end and definitely didn't hit, hit our free throws, and we'll need to do that to be successful the rest of the year, but we did just enough tonight to hold on and win. Pretty special, man. This is a big rivalry, big-time game, and uh, to win it just feels awesome. As for the girls' game for the first time ever, the North Lady Patriots enter the showdown with the crown over south. Some familiar revs doing this game there. First quarter, North senior Morgan Seeley. Nice baseball pass. I know you like this, Ross. You like baseball. <laughs> Throws it the length of the court. Catherine Ruark, nice job for the Lady Patriots with the layup. Got to go get it. North led up by six after one quarter. Second quarter, Lane Curley from downtown. North will build a double-digit lead in the quarter. South couldn't get stopped. Adrian Pritchard inside. She had 15 points. Turning point in this game, final play of the first half. South. LaBria Joyner scores on the breakout and is fouled right as the buzzer sounds. She hits the free throw. Lady Braves trail 21-11 at the break. Third quarter was all Tasia Brewer. Watch the South Junior leap out of balance to save the missed shot. Then they get it back to her. You can't lose her. What hustle, what a three, and get this, South down just one at this point. They were down by 10, remember, at half. Then Brewer gives them the one-point lead. She turned in one of the best quarters in North-South history. Brewer kisses two off the glass to end the third quarter. She had 17 of South's 20 points in the third quarter. South went to the final quarter up four. Fourth quarter, South senior Hannah Lee the deep two. And the Braves, after trailing by double digits in the first half, fight back to bring the crown back to the south side. Love to see the celebration by both these teams. The Lady Braves outscored the Lady Patriots by 21 in the second half to win 46-35 after the game. All the talk was about the South defense and the third quarter South Junior Tasia Brewer had. Tasia, the last couple of weeks she's seen to practice. Um, she's really stepped up her game and she was huge for us. Definitely um, made the big shots when she needed. She wants to take the big shot. I was just feeling it and I wanted my team to be ahead and I wanted to really beat North. We don't like the crown being on the North side, so um, I think that's definitely extra motivation for our girls this year. So hopefully uh, they don't take that for granted. I want to keep that out of place for a while. 
Congratulations to the North boys and the South girls winning big games over at the Holman Center tonight. Now this is hard to believe, but in four years as a head coach at West Vigo, Joe Baylor has beaten every team in the WIC except Edgewood. Coach Baylor is 0-3 versus the Mustangs. He's hoping to get that first win against Edgewood tonight. His Vikings visited the Mustangs, and this is a good start. Cade Lindsey with the ball in his hands gets down in traffic, pulls the trigger on the jumper, and Lindsey gets it to go. The home team with the answer. That's Corey Edge attacking the glass with the lefty off glass and good. But how about Jordan Hauser for the Vikings? Beating the press all by himself. He gets in the corner, little hesitation move. Forget wow. about it. Hauser only 5'9", unstoppable in traffic. The Mustangs have a nice player in edge, though. He gets down the lane again. This time he's fouled. Doesn't matter. Count the bucket. But Coach Baylor picking up that W tonight. This is Adrian Kornfloss. He gets the 10-footer to go off the inbounds play. And West Vigo wins it. They knock off Edgewood 56-46. to the only unbeaten team in the WIC is Sullivan. The Golden Arrows hosted Northview in a key conference game, raising money for cancer. Great cause tonight in Sullivan. Sophomore Brooks Wesley playing a great game. The three from the corner. Wesley had a career-high 25. Northview coming back with some nice interior passing. Quick pass from the post to Jacob Neinsling to the elbow. That brought the Knights within 11. Then Jim Mace with another great pass from the post. This time to Dylan Reynolds. Look at the double pump lay-in from the senior. While we're talking about seniors attacking the glass, Rick, check this out. Caleb Turner with the hoop and harm. He'll take three. The arrow's so athletic. Now playing D off the inbounds. Watch Lance Ellett. The tip to Gavin Marks. Great find now inside to Rhett Smith. That one's high percentage, folks. Smith finished with 17, and Sullivan improves to 15-2 and two on the season with a 74-51 win over Northview. What a start to the show. Yes. We're going to take our first break now. But when we come back, we'll check in on the night in Class 1A basketball with stops at Shackamack, Clay City, WRV, Riverton Park, and Turkey Run. We're the Lagundi Cheerleaders, and you're watching the number one sports show in the Wabash Valley. Anime! We'll be right back! Welcome back to In the Paint. Now, Wabash Valley teams are dominating Class 1A basketball. Entering this week, six of the top 11 spots in Class 1A are from the Valley. Top-ranked teams, Bar Reed, they were at ninth-ranked Shackamack. Tough environment and a tough player in the post for the Vikings. That's Addison Wagler with a slip to the bucket for the score. More offense right in front of the camera. Justin Graber, say cheese. Ford just knocked down a good-looking triple to increase the Vikings' lead. Shackamack trying to battle back at home. Brock Dow with the lefty jumper. That's a long two. Then backcourt mate Brody Crow spotting up for a three of his own. But Bar Reef flexing their muscles tonight. The top ranked Vikings go to the ninth ranked Shackamack and win by 20. Second ranked Lagodi was at 11th ranked WRV. The Wolverines putting together a nice season and they came out hot in this one. From the tip, that's Kate Hill burying the triple for the early Wolverine lead. Then it's Hill sharing the basketball. He gets it down inside to Luke Mowry. Nice footwork from the big man. He picks up the pair and the lead. You know Lagodi not going down without a fight. They have one of the best guards in our area. That's Bryant Ackerman, pure from the elbow for the long two. But the Wolverines were rolling tonight at home. It's Mowry again. Count the bucket. He gets three the old-fashioned way inside. And White River Valley knocks off second-ranked Lagodi. A statement game for the Wolverines coming out with a nine-point win. Eighth-ranked North Davies on the road at Clay City. Full body suits and bathrooms for, for the Eels students. Hey, why not, right? But it's the Cougars getting on the board early. The feed inside to Lewis Nugent for the deuce and the damage. More Cougars. Connor Winkle with the hesitation in the corner. Then he puts it on the deck. And how about the hang time to the hole with it? Blake Sessinger, a great year for the Eels. He gets the steal, and he takes care of things himself on the other end with the lay-in. And Jake Tiefel, a nice move in the lane for a pair of his own right there. And this was a dandy. But North Davies finds a way to win on the road. They beat Clay City by only a point. Bloomfield looking for win number 10 on the season. They hosted North Central. How about Thunderbirds guard Connor Strain locking in on D. He pokes it away for the steal then chases it down for the easy lay-in. Bloomfield balanced offense. Kyle Doan, great pump, great pass to Curtis Hasler wide open under the rim for two. Then Ryan O'Neill ahead to Hasler, gets it on the back iron. Finally it decides it wants to drop in. Then off the rebound, Doan pulls it down, leads the break. Nice step through in traffic. He takes it himself, and Bloomfield picks up the win. They beat North Central 50, 59 to 49. Rick? 
Thanks, Ross. Rockville's ranked 10th in the state in Class A. The Rocks had the tough task of trying to knock off a team for a third time in a season as they faced Riverton Park. An even tougher task on the road, but the Rocks were up for the challenge late in the game. RP Trellin, but Cody Botters finds Aaron Hill for the mid range jumper. The Rocks still without Lane Mahern. Kyle Wheeler, a nifty pass to Jordan McFall under the rim off class for two. Then Gary Ulrich getting creative and Cody Jeffries, the benefactor, nothing but net on the three from the corner. And the Rocks win another. They beat Riverton Park 52 to 33. At Turkey Run, the Warriors hosted South Vermillion early on. Philip Harpenau, a great pass down low to Jordan Brantz. He controls it, sticks it in the bucket. Turkey run, big man Riley Sunderman getting busy on the board. Sunderman stuffing the stat sheet with the putback. Young post players take notes on how to run the floor. Caden Lawson rewards Harpenau for the hustle all alone under the rim. And the Wildcats go up to Turkey Run and they pick up a 63-46 to 46 win. When we come back, we'll have highlights from down south, including stops Vincennes Lincoln and Vincennes Reve, plus all the action from the Little Illini Conference Boys and Girls Championship Games. Stay with us. Welcome back to In the Paint. Vincennes Lincoln is playing some pretty good basketball. The Alices have won three of four, including a nice win over Sullivan. Lincoln at home tonight hosting Evansville Harrison. They're pumped up. Vincennes Lincoln gets going early. Here's Jordan Schatz with a spin move for the shot off the glass. Then one more time, it's Vincennes Lincoln again. This time it's Bryce Nawaski for the bucket. And he's fouled. Nice hang time there by Nawaski. Harrison has a nice pass on their end, though. They get it down low to Danico Scott for the layup. Vincennes Lincoln wins this one 71 to 62. Over in Reve, they were at home tonight as well against Tecumseh. Here's Vincennes Reve looking good as they hit the three from the corner. Then it's Reve's Zach Templin on the other end, on the other corner. He gets a three of his own. There's Templin knocking it down. And Reve wins a close one tonight. One point victory over Tecumseh. Let's head over to Illinois LIC Boys Championship game. Marshall taking on floor two really good teams. Thomas Sisson for Marshall scores inside. I'll tell you what, this Florida team, they're pretty darn good. They are a good squad, knocking off Marshall tonight. Yes, Ethan Lieb here inside. Uses the glass. I like that when you get in the post. Jared Boyle comes back for the Lions. Outside, he likes the shot from downtown. He knocks it down, but Flora is the winner, 65-51 over Marshall. How about the girls' LIC tourney game? We had Marshall again in action, taking on Lawrenceville, and it is Marshall's Katie Grooms two and the foul. Nice take. She'll stroll the line. <laughs> Lawrenceville's Mackenzie Kelly getting the job done for her team. Nice shot fake. She'd hit the shot there. We popped up the score. No big deal. We're not done with the highlights there. Then Arena Coon with the steal and the bucket for Marshall. Coast to coast. And how about steal? Not getting it. How about Marshall? 37 point winners tonight. Congrats. They win their first LIC title since 2003. How about some Sports 10 Spirit Award, Ross? Terre Haute South. Love there. I love the faces. I always love the big heads <laughs> in the crowd. That is excellent. And Terre Haute North students going crazy like they always do. They're always a good time in front in the whole. Holman Center, a big oh, I love that there. How about the body <laughs> suit, City. the bathrobe? I think that's a girl under there, the ponytail hanging out. And the Vincent's back. Lincoln year out, year in and year out, always one of the best student sections in the Wabash Valley. So great to see all the spirit out there. We've had great student sections this year. College hoops after a 4-0 start in the Missouri Valley Conference, the ISU women's basketball team has struggled, dropping three straight. The Lady Sycamores were looking to snap that losing streak tonight at. Missouri State, there's Coach Morin and company, Deja Maddox. What can you say, Ross? 31 points. Deja, when she's shooting it well, she's unstoppable. She seven threes in the game. And she clearly shot it well tonight. A couple freshmen there hooking up for ISU. But as we've learned but with both the ISU men and women's team this year, road wins in the Missouri Valley Conference. Tough to get. ISU puts up a fight. But they fall at Missouri State, 84 to 70. The Lady Sycamores now four and four in the MVC. Well, the Sycamores go go on the road to the Valley, and just like we've seen in the men in the men's division of things, road games in the Valley are tough. Yes. Even though Maddox goes off for a career high 31 tonight, they can't pick up the victory, and really not even close. A lot, to lot of congratulations we got to get to LIC tourney. We just showed Flora won the boys, very impressive team. And how about Marshall? They hadn't won for the girls since 2003. The LIC title, they pick up the win tonight, and 
Of course, the big north-south rivalry, the South girls get the crown back. Congrats to the Lady Braves. And the boys, the North boys, win the shoe for the third straight year. Congrats to the Patriots. That does it for In the Paint tonight. I hope everybody has a great weekend.